On the next page, we're going to review solving trig functions. So if we have tan x plus root 3 equals 0, I first want to subtract the root 3 to the other side and solve for tan x equals negative root 3. So these are basically just like the problems we were just working on back on the last page. We want to find the angles that give us a tangent of negative root 3. So we know that tangent is negative in the second and fourth quadrants. We know that the opposite side is negative root 3 or root 3, and our adjacent side is negative 1 or 1. So again, we're dealing with the 60 degree angles. So our two answers for x are 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. For number 12, we must factor to solve the equation since we have cosine squared x plus cosine x. However, there's a negative in front of the cosine squared x, so we want to first multiply everybody by a negative. So our first term is positive. Now we're ready to factor. So we have a cosine x times a cosine x in order to get a cosine x squared. And then we just need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 2, but add to negative 1. So that would be negative 2 and positive 1. So now we can take each piece and set it equal to 0. So we have cosine x minus 2 equals 0, or cosine x equals 2. And we have cosine x plus 1 equals 0 or cosine x equals negative 1. So now we just need to find the angles that give us a cosine of 2 and a cosine of negative 1. So for cosine of 2, it would have to be an a angle where the adjacent side was 2, but the hypotenuse is 1, and that is undefined because we cannot have a side be bigger than a hypotenuse, so it's impossible to have cosine x equal 2. But there is a place where cosine equals negative 1, and that's on one of the quadrant angles. And that is at pi, because cosine is our x value, and our x value is negative 1 at the angle pi. So our only answer is x equals pi. For number 13, mm -hmm. we want to first subtract 1 and then divide by 2. So we have sine x equals negative one-half. So we just need to find where does sine equal negative one-half. So sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. The opposite side would be mm. negative one. The hypotenuse is two. So we know that we must be dealing with a 30 degree angle. So our two answers are going to be seven pi over six and 11 pi over 6. Number 14 gives us our first multi-angle formula that we need to solve for. So we have a cosine of 2x. Whenever you see a coefficient in front of the x, we have to solve it in a different way. So first we need to find where does cosine x equal negative root 3 over 2. So that's going to occur in either the second or third quadrant where cosine is negative. The adjacent side is root 3, the hypot and I are 2, so we know our opposite sides are 1, or negative 1. So we must be dealing with a 30 degree angle, and we know that these two angles are going to be 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. Now that we know our two answers, we need to write these in general form in order to divide by 2. So we're going to write 2x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 2x equals 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now we're ready to divide by 2 in order to solve for x. 
So if I divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half, I get x equals 5 pi over 12 plus pi n and x equals 7 pi over 12 plus pi n. Now you're still not done with the problem. You need to list all of the angles that are in between 0 and 2 pi that follow these two formulas. So for our first equation, we know that our first x value is going to be 5 pi over 12. And to find our second value, we need to add pi to it. So instead of adding pi, I'm going to get common denominators, and I'm, like, and I'm going to add 12 pi over 12. So that will give me a 17 pi over 12. We want to keep going until we surpass 2 pi. So I'm going to add 12 pi again. And when I do that, I get 29 pi over 12. 29 pi over 12 is too big. It's bigger than 2 pi. So these are my two answers for this formula. But now I need to move on to the next. So for the next one, I have 7 pi over 12 as my first x value. And then if I add 12 pi over 12 to that, I have 19 pi over 12. If I add 12 pi again, I'm going to be past 2 pi. So these four x values are my solutions. For number 15, I have the cosecant of 4x equals 2. So I'm going to change it to the sine mm -hmm. of 4x equals 1 half. So now I need to figure out where does sine equal 1 half, what two angles. So sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. The opposite side is 1, the hypotenuse is 2. So I know that I'm dealing with a 30 degree angle. So my two values are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. But before I divide by 4, I need to write both of those solutions in general form. So my first equation is 4x equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi n, and my second is going to be 4x equals 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi n. Now I'm ready to divide by 4. So I have x equals pi over 24 plus pi n over 2, and I have x equals 5 pi over 24 plus pi n over 2. So now I am almost done, but I need to list all of the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So before I do that, I'm going to get common denominators. So I'm going to multiply 12 and 12, so it's easier for me to add. So my first solution is going to be pi over 24. Add 12 to that, I have 13 pi over 24. If I add 12 to that, I have 25 pi over 24. So I need to keep going because I just surpassed pi. If I add 12 to that, I will have 37 pi over 24. And if I add 12 to that, I'll have 49 pi over 24, which is too big. So I'm going to stop there. For my second one, I'm going to start with 5 pi over 24. If I add 12 to that, I have 17 pi over 24. Adding 12 to that, I have 29 pi over 24. And then if I add 12 to that, I have 41 pi over 24. And those are the eight solutions. 
For number 16, I'm going to first change it to tan squared x. And if we do the reciprocal of 1, we still get a 1. And now to undo the square, I'm going to take a square root of both sides. So I have tan x. And whenever you take a square root while you're solving, you need to do plus or minus. So I have tan x equals plus or minus 1. So instead of just getting two solutions, I'm going to end up getting four solutions because it can equal plus or minus 1 in all four quadrants. So we draw four triangles. Tangent is 1 if the opposite side and the adjacent side are both 1. So we know that we're dealing with all 45 degree angles. So if we list all the 45 degree angles, we have pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Now we're going to review simplifying identities. So if we have secant squared x cotangent x minus cotangent x, we have two cotangent x's, so we want to factor one out. And that gives us secant squared minus 1. And at this point, we recognize that secant squared is in one of our identities. And our Pythagorean identities are uh, cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And then if I divide everybody by cosine squared x, I would get 1 plus tan squared x equals secant squared x. So that means that secant squared x minus 1 would equal tan squared x. So we're going to change that to a tan squared x. I forgot an x up here. And now we know that cotangent and tangent are inverses of each other. So we really have 1 over tan x times tan squared x. And a tangent would cancel out. So we're just left with tan x. For problem 18, we want to add these two fractions together, and in order to do that, you need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply the first one by cosine x over cosine x, and the second one by sine x over sine x. That gives me cosine squared x plus sine squared x all over cosine x sine x. And if we remember our, our Pythagorean identities, the numerator would equal 1. So we have 1 over cosine x sine x. And we can change those to the inverse functions, which is secant x cosecant x. For number 19, we just remember that cosecant is the same as 1 over sine x. So it just equals 1. For number 20, again, we want to factor out a cotangent squared x since there's two of them. And then we remember from our identities that 1 minus cosine squared x is the same as sine squared x. And then cotangent squared x is the same as cosine squared x over sine squared x. So if we multiply that by sine squared x, we end up with cosine squared x.